Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from the code called best time to buy and sell stock. It's easy. Let's get started. You are given an array of prices where prices I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, return zero. So what we want to do is buy a stock on a certain day and a different day in the future, sell that stock and find the max profit we can achieve. Example one, we have our input prices right here. The max profit we can make is five and that's if we buy on day two at price one and sell on day five at price six. So six minus one is five. Note that buying on day two and selling on day one is not allowed because you must buy before you sell. We're not shorting any stocks here. We have to buy first and then sell on a different date in the future. Example two, we have prices seven, six, four, three, one. Here we output zero. No transactions are done and max profit is zero. We can never actually make a profit. If we buy on seven, we never have a number greater than seven to sell on. Or if we buy on six, there's no number that we can actually sell on. This is a decreasing array. And so we output zero. No profit will ever be made here. So how do we solve this? This is actually pretty straightforward. We just need to think about how we can maximize profit. Profit is sell minus buy. So if we're selling at a certain price and buying at whatever price that is, in order to maximize profit, there are two things that you can do. You can either increase sell price or decrease buy price to increase that delta in between them and maximize profit. And that's exactly what we're going to try to do. So let's take a look at this example again. I have right here, I'm going to change it up a little bit. This is my current input prices and I'm gonna start at day one. So far, this is the only value, the only price I've seen. What can I do? I can't sell right now because I have to buy first, which means the only thing I can actually do is buy at price seven. So this is my buy price. Now, in order to make a profit, I want a number that's greater than my buy price. Before we look into numbers later on, let's think about all the possibilities related to our buy price. Again, there are only gonna be two options. A number is either going to be greater than or equal to my buy price, in which case I can make a profit that's either zero or more, or it's going to be less than my buy price, in which case I can't make any profit. But what I can do is update my buy price to be that new lower number. Because say any point I sell in the future, I'm gonna be able to maximize profit if I lower my buy price. In this example right here, I buy at seven and let's iterate through. So this new price that I come across, P, is the next index one. It's lower than my current buy price, so I can't make a profit, but I'm gonna go ahead and update my buy price to be one. This means at any point in the future, if I ever sell, I'm gonna be getting six more because I bought at one rather than buying at seven. And this is what I'm gonna do for the entire rate. Anytime I see a number that's lower than my current buy price, I'm updating my buy price. Anytime it's higher, I'm going to see what the potential profit can be and see if it's bigger than the max profit I've seen so far and go ahead and update that. So right now there is no max profit, in which case it's initialized to zero. And my buy price is one. Buy price is just going to be storing the smallest value I've seen so far. So between these two, buy is going to be one. And I'm actually going to move buy down up here. And it's right here. So moving price down, we now have price at five. This is bigger than buy, so a profit can be made, which is five minus one, and it's equal to four. I move down again, and my price is three. So far, everything I've seen before this current day three is 715, and my lowest 
number was one. So this is my buy price and this is my sell. What profit can I make? I can make a profit of two. It's not bigger than my max profit. So no updates are needed. And I can move down the list of prices again. I now see price six. So six minus my current buy price is five. And I can actually go ahead and update max profit to be five. Moving down, I see a price of zero. Here, zero is less than my current buy price. So I'm actually going to be moving buy to be zero. This is now zero because anything in the future, we can use whatever we've seen all the way up to the zero index to be a potential buy. And obviously, I want to go as low as possible. So zero is now my buy price. And whatever I come across next is going to be a potential buy or sell depending on how it relates to this buy price. This is greater than zero. So this is going to be a sell. So 12 minus zero is 12. So my max profit here is 12. So all I need to do is iterate through prices. As soon as I see a number lower than my current buy, I update buy. Otherwise, I find all the profits and in the end, just return max profit. So let's go ahead and code this up. I'm going to initialize max profit to be zero. And I'm going to loop through prices. So for price in prices, if the price is less than my buy price, which I'm going to initialize to the first of the input, the first index of the input. So if my price is less than buy, I'm updating buy to be this new price. Else, I'm going to see what profit I can make, and I'm going to store that to max profit. So max profit is going to be the max of what I have stored in there right now, which is zero, or price minus buy. In the end, all I have to do is return my max profit. And there's actually another way to write this. All I can do instead of waiting to see if price is less than buy, I just do buy is going to be the minimum of what's there right now, or this new price that I see. And this way we don't need this entire if else block. So I'm going to get rid of this here and move this down. So what I'm going to do is if my current price is smaller than my buy price, I update buy price. Otherwise, buy price just says what it is. So we're always going to have the smallest number we've seen so far in buy. And profit is always going to be whatever price I'm on minus my current buy price. So let's go ahead and run this code. One time error, max profit not defined. There needs to be an I over here on code. Accepted and submit. And it's accepted as well. So before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example. And I'm just going to make one up here. Say I have the following numbers. What is going to be my max profit here? First things first, I start with that first line, max profit initialized to zero. Buy price is currently also that first index, which is three. Now I'm going to loop through all prices. My first price I come across is three. Buy is going to be the minimum of everything I've seen so far, so it stays three. And max profit is going to be between zero and three minus three, which is also zero. So it stays as is. Moving down, we see four. Buy is going to be the minimum of the current price and whatever we have. So this stays three. Max profit is going to be this price minus buy. So that's going to be one and we can actually make an update here. Moving down, we come across two. Two and three, two is the minimum. And there's no need to update max profit here. So we move down. We are now at five. Buy price is going to stay two because two is less than five. And max profit, five minus two is less than the current max profit I have so far. So I go ahead and update that to be three. Moving down, my new buy price is going to be one. 
and max profit would be whatever is here right now versus price minus buy, which is zero. So there's no need to make any updates. So talking about space and time complexity for space, we only ever store two variables, max profit or buy. So that's constant O of one. And for time complexity, we go through the entire list of prices. So that's order of O of N time complexity. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.